Day three at Riverside Festival, I'm joined beside me by Jungle Hussey. How are you doing, bro? I'm alright. How all are right? you? I'm all good, mate. I'm sitting in the sunshine, enjoying you it all day. Cream, man. Oh, oh, yeah, mate. That's what I was saying earlier. <laughs> um, I was one of those kids that, like, I, like any holiday, my mum was like, do not leave this room, like, plastered head to toe in right. sun cream, mate. So I've just not got there. I made the mistake once of not wearing sun cream. I was on holiday in Jamaica and I was like, ah, yeah, I don't need sun cream. I'm fine. And I was crispy. <laughs> it was the most painful time of my life. I know I was talking to my mate earlier, it actually like, makes you out if you get that sunburn. Yeah, you're just yeah. lying about, can't it's do not anything. Good. It's not good. I know. So you just um, opened up the square stage, you were saying yeah, a wee warm up slot. How was that for you? I love warm up slots, as I was saying, but it can be difficult. You need to get the tone right every time. Yeah. And like sometimes you just have to. You just have to be within yourself. You just have yeah. to be like, actually, I'm fine today. It doesn't matter what I'm going to play. Just enjoy it, but also be mindful of who's coming after you. Yeah. And then, but I had, I had a good time. Yeah, so Derek, I didn't stop dancing. you were saying you were going to catch Derek Carter after you. Yeah. Um, is he quite a big influence on you? Was like, yeah, of course, man. Like Joe Castle, Derek. I mean, like people like that are just like house kind of giants for me. But yeah, it's just that they, I feel like there's a spiritual energy with when they're playing. Mm -hmm. And like, they're just unfazed by stuff. So yeah. yeah, big time. Amazing. So tell me a bit about yourself, mate. When did you get interested in um, music? And how did your, the DJ career start for you? Probably from kids. I feel like everybody has like an early story to music. Yeah. Everybody will have like their moment where it's like, oh, actually, I remember that song when that came out. Yeah, or I remember yeah. that thing that that kind of like thought, all right, what what's that? That sounds new or refreshing. And to be honest, I, I was talking to this with somebody else. I was talking about it with somebody else. And it was this like Disney put out this like, I can't remember what film it was, but they put out this CD and like, I think it was 94 or 95. And it had like Pump Up The Jam. And it had some, it had some like, classic dance tracks yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah. But it's obviously remixed for a Disney version of it. Right, okay. And I remember listening to it and being like, what is this? Like, I, I, at the time I must have been like six or seven. I'm thinking, okay, dance music is some, I didn't know that was dance music. Yeah. But the energy that it came off, came off was like amazing. But I'm the youngest of three. So like my brother is 15 years older than me. My sister's 10 years older than me. And nine, think about 93 to 96 peak kind of like, Hardcore, jungle, yeah. like, uh, dance music was at its peak and I was just listening to what they were listening to. Mm -hmm. So that, I feel like from an early age, I was already just kind of like listening to music from all sorts of things. Yeah. My parents are Jamaican, so reggae was a, obviously like a, just a thing in the house that mm -hmm. I didn't really think about. And it wasn't really something that I actually cared about until I got older. Like yeah. It just used to be something that just was around. And then... It's quite interesting because like reggae and dancehall and ragga and stuff like that was like so played and quite influential that I, now it's influential into what I do now even though I do a lot of house and like disco and stuff yeah it's always there in the back of my mind I think mm -hmm. so I was reading that you're originally from South London yeah and you you came to Glasgow was it to study no was it for a, a master's no I wanted to oh right okay. oh yeah in the skinny I was like yeah I moved up in 2014 a couple of months before the referendum um, and a month before the art school burnt down oh and no way I didn't move directly to do an MA but I thought about it and like my partner was living here as well so I'd moved up at that point um, and I had enough of London I, I knew I wasn't going to be in London anyway and I studied in Manchester so I'd kind of done a bit of hopping around okay um, uh, and then I ended up in Glasgow and just working, working yeah. bars, working in retail, and just doing the other stuff. Yeah. And like music wasn't really the, the thing. Mm -hmm. it's how come? How, how come not London? Uh, it's, it's a funny thing. I think like when people, there'll probably be people in Glasgow just like, oh, I'm sick of Glasgow. I need to go somewhere else. I need to be like, I need to see something else. Yeah, yeah. And your hometown's actually amazing, but because you're from it, you don't realise it, so or you, you get know. quite exhausted of it. With London, it's the same thing. But I know there's so much going on in London, but with London, it's constantly changing. At yeah. least with Glasgow, there's like, there is money in the city council, we'll do what they want with it. But it's a slower change. You won't see that rapid change of your community very quickly. Like, where it's like in London, it, oh, well, actually gentrification is a whole different thing. But in London, that happened quite a lot and I kind of was quite exhausted. Yeah. I felt like there wasn't really, uh, yeah, there was just stuff there that I just didn't really like click with too much. And then I just was, that's why I moved to Manchester to study. I had a great time in Manchester, went back to London, I was working within the arts world and just ended up just moving out of it, mm -hmm. really. Where does um, Jungle Hussey come from? comes from two funny things. I love the term hussy, if somebody's a hussy. 
which is like an American slang for something being a bit of a, a slut. Right, um, <laughs> okay. Or, or not even a slut, but just being like, you're a hussy. Um, and Jungle Pussy, who's a musician, also an American musician, who I think has an amazing aura about her style. Right. And, and she's also very, like, just like, don't take yourself too seriously, but also be very much connected to yourself. Yeah. So it was just kind of a joke. And I put the two and two together, and I'm like, you know, it's got a ring to it, and I'm just going to stick with it. Stick with it. Uh, and it kept going. Nice. Um, so you also do, I see you with a camera around your, your uh, waist there, you do some photography. Um, right. al that alongside, like, music, where do, where do you think your creativity stems from? Like, what sort of influenced that? Both. Mm -hmm. Both. I think, I think with, yeah, with all of it, it's, it, it all intertwines. Yeah. Sometimes you'll think, about actually, music first. Even filmmaking, even like recording uh, video and stuff, and you're thinking about the sound, and you're thinking about what's happening in the atmosphere, like the ambience and stuff like that. So you're thinking about sound, but you're also thinking about the image. I think mm -hmm. they both work together. It's yeah. so like even with DJ sets and stuff, and it's just like, where is this going? Like as a vision. Yeah. If uh, I've got an hour, I've got an hour and a half. Where do I want people to start with, and where do I want people to end with? Is there a color chart that I'm working with here, or something like that? You know, mm -hmm. um, I studied photography, so I guess that's my like base. I didn't study sound, but sound is just something that comes as part of it. You yeah. Know? Um, you recently played at uh, the Optimo thing in uh, Queens Park. How yeah, was, was that, fun. man? Was that good? That was so good. I love Johnny and Keith. They're, um, I feel like they get it and have got it for quite a long time. Oh yeah. And you know, to have something that's gone on for that long. Um, that whole chat about spiritual energy. Sometimes within like the the circuit, I've now learned like you know, you know you do gigs and you do stuff, but you just need to find your people. Um, and they've definitely, I mean, they found their people years ago. But yeah. it's a funny thing where it's it's not about who's booking you. Uh, it's not about getting the next gigs. It's not always about like this kind of like career step up thing. Mm -hmm. It's about just being quite comfortable and like what you do. Um, and just, yeah, I mean, doing a 25th birthday for them was actually really fun. It was really nice to be invited to do something like that. Yeah. Uh, and me and Planter and Chip done a back-to-back, -back, and she's also somebody I really adore, so, yeah, nice. fun. Nice. Um, will you be sticking around for anyone else's set? Is there anyone else you want to see? Yeah, uh, I mean, Rasheen's on. Yeah. Uh, Big Frida, talking about bounce, originality, kind of like, Big Frida's been doing it for so long, and just like, sometimes I don't think gets the credit like she deserves, yeah. like, but, um, I'm also going to be around just for the satellite stage. It's like, I know you get to see your local acts all the time because it's a local thing, but sometimes actually it's amazing. Yeah. Like last year's Riverside was so good. And this is where the uh, satellite stage yeah, was. Yeah. And it's kind of cocooned and like, you can just see your kind of community of people that you're around a lot. Yeah. It's nice to kind of jump to the big stages and see the big acts and see people who are doing really well. Um, but it's also nice to kind of just like show home support. Amazing. And, um, What's coming up for you in the future, mate? Have you got things in the in the pipeline? I actually yeah. seen that you were doing like photos for some of the artists that are on the posters and that. I noticed no, you were, no. they were tagging you. I should do another zine. I done a zine last year of just like I thought it would be good to kind of have an archival document of just like if you're doing press shots for quite a lot of people, eventually you have quite a lot of just like people who might have been early in their careers are now like doing quite well. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, Sophie's here now, and like I've done pictures of Sophie back, back in 2016, um, and like I've done stuff for Maya Nightwave, like, you know, just people who have been in Glasgow who also have their big careers in themselves. Um, so I find that fun. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick around tonight and just kind of like have a bit of fun, um, just see what happens with it. Brilliant. Um, well, it was a pleasure to speak to you. Yeah, you to too. Meet you, man. Nice, mate. I, yeah. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the rest um, of your day. The next thing that I kind of the stuff that's coming up is I mean the cheat has been quite amazing to me the past yeah. year and like this kind of residency thing that's kind of kicked in so I've got a papaya whip which is the night that I've been doing coming up next week I'm bringing bot buck in and it's supposed I mean the whole residency thing is you're meant to be doing like local acts <laughs> but I mean me and Alex have been talking a bit and I was like Alex you need to come back to Glasgow and like the last time we was here was years ago um, and it's quite interesting who kind of gets on the, the, the tour circuit kind of thing yeah. who gets booked and stuff and I'm not, like, it's, it's no one's fault. It's obviously just like calendars and just like how yeah. things work out. But for me, the way Night Slugs kind of like shaped a lot of like early 2010s is really influential how you hear some of the sounds now. And even Dance System, well, like Bok Bok started with Dance System. He used to be um, Elvis 1990 yeah. and stuff. And like, it's really influential and just like how you can just like blend stuff, constantly blending and like constantly just shaping how the scene is. So that's going to be next Friday. 
and then I've got another one which I think is going to be in August or September. Um, but yeah, the Cheetah family's been really, really sweet to me. Brilliant. And like Wardy's, yeah, Wardy's a gem. Nice, mate. Everybody there. But uh, I'll catch you soon. Yeah, I'll be sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank right. you. Cheers, Cheers man.